Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over generating a random secure password on the command line. And specifically, we're going to use a tool called PWGen, which is not installed by default, but it is on most major distros package managers. So if you're running something like Debian or Ubuntu, you can just apt install PWGen. If you're running Mac OS, you can always brew install it. If you're running something else, you know where to go. So when you run this command by default, what it does is it generates a whole bunch of random passwords that are eight characters long. But chances are that's probably not what you want. At least that's not, you know, that's not what I want, right? Typically the workflow is I go to some website, I'm gonna create an account somewhere, and it's asking me to input one password, not like 150 of them or, you know, whatever over here. Also chances are you'll want something that's a lot longer than eight characters because, you know, password security is a real thing. So if you run the help menu for this tool, we can see that there's all sorts of different options that we can set, as well as setting the password length and how many passwords that you actually wanna generate. So if you run PW gen here with like a 16 character password, then uh, you know we get 16 characters instead of eight. You can also choose to only generate one of them if you'd like, or you know we can always just generate like five of them and then also tell it to output them on separate lines instead of being column based. Alternatively, you can just do the negative one here to generate one password that is on one line. You know, we can also make it bigger too if we want. You know, we can go 64, it doesn't really matter. You can choose, you know, any number that you want uh, within reason, of course. You know, I haven't really gone too crazy here. Like, can you actually do 345? Apparently you can. But uh, now let's take a look here at some of the options that you can set. So, you know, when you go to some of these sites, right, you can enter in some like really great password, like intergalactic violin encrusted moose knuckles. That's probably something like, you know, 40 or 50 characters long, but still the site that you're on says, oh, by the way, you know, you have to have at least one number or one special character or, you know, one uppercase letter or something like that. So this tool actually uh, gives you that type of guarantee. So if we wanted to, we can generate, let's say, you know, a 16 character password with dash C here, which is going to include at least one special character in the password, which I'm not gonna run now because, you know, you get the idea, right? An uppercase A or something like that. But you can also choose for whatever reason, if you just wanted lowercase ones guaranteed, you can always do the, the dash capital A here. But also we can see here dash N includes at least one number in the password. Likewise, the opposite of that, dash zero will not include any numbers, but we do want numbers, so let's include that. And then uh, dash Y over here says, you know, let's at least include one special symbol in the password. So we probably want that as well, right? Like some type of exclamation point or an equal sign or something like that. And you can see here too, uh, you know, if you're generating a password for some very specific use case, you can also choose to remove any characters that you want. So if you had like a vendetta against the letter L, you can always just remove L from all passwords being generated. You know, that could be interesting, uh, you know, because sometimes depending on what font you're using, it's very hard to tell uh, the difference between something like a lowercase L and a capital I. But in my case, I happen to be using a password manager. So, you know, this crazy random password that gets generated by this tool is just being saved into a password manager that I just copy to my clipboard on demand. And I'll show you an example of that, uh, you know, once we generate some passwords. And then uh, we have this other uh, option here, dash S, which is, you know, generate completely random passwords. And, you know, we'll see the difference between the two. And uh, the rest of the options, honestly, I just don't really mess with because, you know, I'm dealing with a password manager. I don't really care about uh, you know, ambiguous characters like, you know, the lowercase L and uppercase I or the difference between like a zero and uh, like a capital O or something like that. And yeah, the other stuff, honestly, uh, I don't find them to be useful in my day to day, except for this negative one here, because, you know, we can just generate one password. So let's just generate here and see what happens. And yeah, I'll make sure to do the negative one just so we get one password. And honestly, typically, you know, I go quite a bit longer than 16 characters. You know, let's just go like 48 characters, right? You know, it's just generating passwords that look like this. And uh, if we exclude that S1, the one that, you know, generates secure passwords, then we get passwords that have, you know, less special characters and more, uh, you know, alphanumeric characters, I guess, right? Like A through Z, capital and lowercase. But usually I just roll with this here uh, with these flags. And uh, I actually name them sync because it's a lot easier to remember the flags uh, like that. And it outputs the same result as we saw before. Uh, so this is pretty much what I do to generate random passwords. But also what I've done is uh, if you take a look here at uh, my aliases file, I recently created a new alias called PW, which basically runs that password gen tool with the sync flags and it generates a 48 character password by default. Make sure we just have one of them. And then it actually just copies it straight to the clipboard. So now I can just run something like PW and right now this password is copied to my clipboard and now I can throw it into my password manager or you know maybe directly onto a web form or something like that. 
And uh, if, you, if you ever wanted to see like what the output of that is, you know, if you're running something like native Linux or WSL like me, you can just run xclip-o here to get the output of the clipboard. So, you know, there it is. But if you just run it like this, then, you know, you can just paste this anywhere you want. I can paste it on the command line now. It's going to come out a little bit weird because, you know, this is not an actual command that you can run. But uh, you get the idea, right? Like this seems to be uh, a pretty handy workflow. So typically what I would do is like, you know, let's say I am on some website. They're asking me to put in a password. So I'll just like jump to the command line, generate my password, and then I'll use the pass command line tool. This is my password manager. You know, maybe I'll make a video about this one in the future. And, uh, you know, let's just say, uh, you know, this, the site's name is like example123.com. And now it's like, okay, what's the password for this? You know, I'm just pasting it in, pasting it in. And now if I wanted to check the password to whatever this is here, you know, example123.com, you know, I can just get the password there. And this is the password that was generated using uh, PWGen. Alternatively, with this pass tool, you can pass in dash C here. And this actually copies the password to the clipboard for 45 seconds. You know, that really wouldn't be handy to do right after generating your password. But if you were looking up your password later, like maybe two days from now or something like that, then, uh, you know, that's how you can just copy it to your clipboard and it disappears after 45 seconds. Now, you might be wondering, you know, why use the PWGen tool? And uh, because there are some other tools that you can run, for example, you can use OpenSSL to generate a uh, base64 password. Uh, I'm looking over here at my cheat sheet because this command's a little bit funky to run because I don't really run it all the time. But you know, you can generate something like an OpenSSL random base64 encoded uh, password that is 48 bytes long, and you'll get something like this. But if you actually do like a word count on this one, it's, it's 65 characters long, not 48. And, uh, you know, you're not guaranteed to get uh, certain special characters in there, right? So like this last one that is generated here, there are no special characters in here as far as I can tell. Uh, but this one has the forward slash and, uh, you know, like that one has a plus sign. So that's kind of why I'm not using something like OpenSSL to generate this password. Likewise, if you're familiar with the pass tool, uh, it has its own generate function here to generate a random password. But you know, it doesn't have the same flexibility as what PWGen does when it comes to like ensuring that you have, you know, one uppercase one, et cetera, et cetera. So I just find it uh, worthwhile to install PWGen. You know, with the alias set up, it's pretty easy just to generate a password on, uh, on command. So with that said, uh, thanks a lot for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. And also let me know in the comments below if you're going to be using PWGen or if you've been using it before or if you're using something, uh, something different, let us know. So with that said, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.